multiplexing and multiple access. Multiplexing. Multiplexing is the transmission of information in any form from one or more sources to one or more destinations over the same transmission medium or facility. Although transmission occurs in the same facility, they do not necessarily occur at the same time or occupy the same bandwidth. There are several domains in which multiplexing can be accomplished. It can be in space, phase, time, frequency, and wavelength. This is to illustrate how multiplexing works. First, we have an n number of senders, which will send separate data each. Their message signals will all go to a multiplexor, sometimes called multiplexer, or simply MUX, which will combine all of their data and multiplex it into one channel, or one path. Now that path is called a shared medium for all the messages to travel through. It will then arrive into a demultiplexor or demultiplexer or sometimes just demux that will in turn just reverse the process of our multiplexor. It will separate each message and send it to the corresponding receiver. Basic types of multiplexing. There are four basic approaches to multiplexing that we each have a set of variations and implementations. First, we have the frequency division multiplexing or FDM. Then we have our wavelength division multiplexing or WDM. Next, we have the time division multiplexing or TDM. And lastly, we have the co-division multiplexing or CDM. TDM and FDM are widely used. WDM is a form of FDM that is used for optical fibers. CDM is a mathematical approach used in cell phone mechanisms. Overview of FDM. A set of radio signals can transmit electromagnetic signals simultaneously, that is, without interference provided. They each use a separate channel, i.e. carrier frequencies. This is why we modulate. It is possible to send simultaneously multiple carrier waves over a single copper wire. A demultiplexor applies a set of filters that each extract a small range of frequencies near one of the carrier frequencies. A key idea is that the filters used in FDM only examine frequencies. If a sender or receiver pair is assigned a particular carrier frequency. FDM mechanism will separate the frequency from others without otherwise modifying the signal. This is the receiver side for our FDM. We have a single path in which all the frequencies for all channels are present. It will then pass through a demultiplexer, which are just various filters. And every filter will, will let the corresponding frequencies pass through. For example, filter 1 will allow the frequencies from sender 1 to pass through, and the receiver would be receiver 1. For filter 2, it will allow only messages from sender 2 to pass through, and the destination will be to receiver 2, and so on. Overview of WDM. WDM refers to the application of FDM to optical fiber. Some sources use the term dense WDM or DWDM to emphasize that many wavelengths of light can be employed. The inputs and outputs of such multiplexing are wavelengths of light. This is denoted by the Greek letter lambda and informally called colors. When white light passes through a prism, Colors of the spectrum are spread out. If a set of colored light beams are each directed into a prism at the correct angle, the prism will combine the beams to form a single beam of white light. Here is to illustrate how WDM works. First, we have various wavelengths or various frequencies of light since wavelength and 
frequencies are directly related. We can interchange the terms, but wavelength is more formally used for light messages. So in this case, we have lambda 1, lambda 2, up until lambda k. These are different messages that are sent via light. So to combine these, we have a multiplexer called a prism. The prism will combine all the light waves and send it towards a transmission medium. The transmission medium for light isn't a copper cable. It is a optical fiber. At the demultiplexing side, we have another prism that will do the opposite of what the first prism did. It will now scatter the different wavelengths onto the different receivers. Overview of TDM. TDM is less esoteric than FDM and does not rely on special properties of electromagnetic energy. Multiplexing in time simply means transmitting an item from one source and then transmitting an item from another source, and so on. So in the illustration below, we can see n number of senders and all the messages from all the senders will be combined into one single path by the multiplexer. But unlike the multiplexer in FDM and WDM, the multiplexer in TDM will only allow one sender's message to pass through at any given time. So in this example, the multiplexer allowed the message from sender 1 to pass through. As you can see, there is a 1 at the rightmost side of our channel or at the path. And then we have the message from sender 2 and then the message from sender 3 and so on up until the message from sender n. And after the message from sender n has been transmitted, the multiplexer will then allow the message from sender 1 to pass through only. And then the message from sender 2, and then the cycle repeats. At the demultiplexer side, it must be synchronized with the multiplexer so the so that the message from sender 1 will be sent to receiver 1 and the message from sender 2 will be sent to receiver 2 up until receiver n. Transmission from multiple sources occur on the same facility but not at the same time. Transmission from various sources interleaved in the time domain. PCM system is the most prevalent encoding technique used for TDM signals. And the fundamental building block of TDM systems in the US begins with the DS-0 channel. Now an overview of CDM. CDM used in parts of the cellular telephone system and for some satellite communication. The specific version of CDM used in cell phones is known as Code Division Multiple Access, or CDMA. CDM does not rely on physical properties, such as frequency or time. CDM relies on an interesting mathematical idea. That is, values from orthogonal vector spaces can be combined and separated without interference. Each sender is assigned a unique binary code, C sub i, that is known as a chip sequence. Chip sequences are selected to be orthogonal vectors, i.e. the dot product of any two chip sequences is zero. This illustration shows how synchronous TDM works. So again, we have multiple users or multiple sources that will each send a message to a multiplexer. The multiplexer would then send the signal onto a single path but only one at a time since this is TDM. So the first bit that was sent was from the user 1 and the second bit that was sent was from user 2, the third is from user 3, and the last was from user 4. After that it will again go back to user 1, 2, 3, and so on. 
after all the messages has been sent, it will go to the demultiplexor and then to the mainframe computer where certain processes will happen on the messages. This is synchronous TDM, remember. This is a special type of synchronous TDM multiplexer. This is special because device A is sampled twice as fast as the other devices. So in a single frame, there exists two time slots for slot A or for device A. Notice that the multiplexor is illustrated as a rotary switch because this is basically how a multiplexer for TDM works. The contact will rotate, in this case counterclockwise, first from device A, and then another contact for device A, and then a contact for device B, and then from C, and then D, and then it will go all the way back to device A. As you can see, there are two contacts for device A, that is why device A is sampled twice as fast as the other devices. Now for synchronous TDM, it has this inefficiency problem. As you can see in the illustration, only user 1 transmits data. Users 2, 3, and 4 are idle. But even when this is the case, the multiplexer still allots a time slot for the idle users. And so, the speed is still the same as before, even if three users are idle. So the frame goes from data 1 and then 0, 0, 0 because the three users is, are, zero, are idle. And then the next frame still goes from data 1 and then 0, 0, 0. This kind of inefficiency can be solved by using an asynchronous TDM system. T1 Digital Carrier A digital carrier system is a communications system that uses digital pulse rather than analog signals and code information. T1 has been the North American digital multiplexing standard since 1963 and recognized by the ITU-T as recommendation G.733. T1 stands for Transmission 1 and specifies a digital carrier system using PCM encoded analog signals. A T1 digital carrier system, time division multiplexes PCM encoded samples from 24 voice band channels. For transmission over a single metallic pair or optical fiber transmission line. Each voice band channel has a bandwidth of approximately 300 Hz to 3000 Hz. Early T1 carrier systems use D1 digital channel banks, which are PCM encoders and decoders, with a 7 bit magnitude only PCM code analog companding and mu is equal to 100. A later version of D1 added an eighth bit, a signaling bit, to each PCM code for performing inter-office signaling. Over the years, T1 carrier systems generally progressed through D2, D3, D4, D5, and D6 channel banks. This is an example of D1 channel banks with only 7-bit magnitude PCM code. As you can see, one sample or one TDM frame consists of 24 channels from channel 1 up until channel 24, and each channel has 7 bits. From our LSB B sub 0 on the right side to our MSB B sub 6 on the left side and then a framing bit to indicate the end or a beginning of a frame. This illustration is almost the same as the previous one. The difference is in the bits. The previous one has 7 bits of magnitude. This one has only 6 bits for magnitude 
and one bit as a sign bit. So there are still seven bits, but six are for magnitude and one is for the sign. Next, we have a seven bit magnitude PCM code. So one bit for the sign and six for our magnitude. And then there is an added signaling bit. So we have eight bits in total for this system. North American Digital Hierarchy. Multiplexing signals in digital form lends itself easily to interconnecting digital transmission facilities with different transmission bit rates. This is developed by AT&T for multiplexing digital signals from multiple sources into a single higher speed pulse stream suitable for transmission on the next higher level of hierarchy. To upgrade from one level in the hierarchy to the next level, special device called modem is required. A modem can handle bitrate conversions in both directions and is designated by M12, M23, and so on, which identifies the input and output digital signals. Digital signals are routed at central locations called Digital Cross Connects, or DSX, which provides a convenient place to make patchable interconnects and perform routine maintenance and troubleshooting. T Carrier Systems T carriers are used for transmission of PCM encoded time division multiplex digital signals. This utilizes special line encoded signals and metallic cables that have been conditioned to meet the relatively high bandwidths required for high speed digital transmission. This illustrates how regenerative repeaters work. Notice in the image. Let's start from the left side. We have from PCM highway, meaning this is the wire or optical fiber, which allows PCM signals to pass through. And then we have received deteriorated pulses. So as you can see, it is no longer a digital pulse. This might be because the wire is too long, that attenuation happened, or there are so many interferences that can happen along the wire. So the received deteriorated pulses will pass through an amplifier and equalizer, which will reshape the pulse. After the pulses have been reshaped and amplified, it will be sampled by a timing clock which will extract the clock signal and send it to a regenerator and the other input of the regenerator is our reshaped pulses. The regenerator will this time try to reconstruct the original pulses based on the timing clock and the reshaped pulses. So this is where the decision occurs. And then the regenerator will send the data. Hopefully it has been reconstructed 100%. It will send the data along the transmission line. So these regenerative repeaters are placed in long transmission lines in which the signals, the digital signals, have a high probability of attenuating or being interfered with by other signals or noise. In summary, the amplifier, equalizer, filters, and shapes the incoming digital signal and raises its power level so that the regenerator circuit can make a pulse, no pulse decision. The timing clock recovery circuit reproduces the clocking information from the received data and provides the proper timing information to the regenerator so that the samples can be made at an optimum time. This minimizes the chance of an error occurring. The regenerative repeater 
simply a threshold detector that compares the sampled voltage received to a reference level and determines whether the bit is a logic 1 or a logic 0. T1 Carrier Systems T1 Carrier Systems are designed to combine PCM and TDM techniques for short-haul transmission of 24, 64 kbps channels with each channel capable of carrying digitally encoded voice band telephone signals or data. The transmission bitrate or line speed is 1.544 Mbps. This includes an 8 kilobits per second framing bit. The length typically range from about 1 mile to over 50 miles. This uses BPRZ AMI encoding with regenerative repeaters placed every 3,000, 6,000, or 9,000 feet. Next, we have T2 carrier systems. T2 carriers time division multiplexes 96 64 kbps voice or data channels into a single 6.312 mbps data signal for transmission over twisted pair copper wire up to 500 miles over a special lockup or low capacitance metallic cable. This also uses BPRZ AMI encoding. However, because of the higher transmission rate, clock synchronization is even more critical than with a T1 carrier. It uses an alternative method of encoding that ample transition occur in the data called binary 6-0 substitution or B6-JS. And then we have our T3 carrier systems. T3 carriers time division multiplex 672 64 kbps voice or data channels for transmission over a single 3A RDS coaxial cable. Transmission bitrate is 44736 bits per second and the coding technique used is binary 30 substitution. Next we have T4M carrier systems. The T4M carrier time division multiplex 4032 64 kbps voice or data channels for transmission over a single T4M coaxial cable up to 500 miles. The transmission rate is sufficiently high that the substitute patterns are impractical. Instead, this transmits scrambled unipolar energy digital signals. And lastly, we have T5 carrier systems. T5 carrier time division multiplex 8064 64 kbps voice or data channels and transmits them at a 560.16 mbps rate over a single coaxial cable. European digital carrier system. In Europe, a different version of T carrier lines is used called E lines. Basic E1 systems has a 125 microsecond frame divided into 32 equal time slots. Time slot 0 is used for frame alignment pattern and for an alarm channel. Time slot 17 is used for a common signaling channel or CSC. The signaling for all 30 voice band channels is accomplished on the common signaling channel. 30 voice band channels are time division multiplex into each E1 frame. Here are different E lines. We have E1, E2, E3, and E4. Each one is faster than the previous one. So for E1, we have a transmission rate of 2.048 Mbps and a channel capacity of 30. E2 is faster and has more channel capacity than E1 and E3 is a lot faster and has 4 times the channel capacity and E4. The last one is so much faster and has definitely a lot more channel capacity than E3. The European Digital Transmission System has a TDM multiplexing hierarchy similar to North American hierarchy. 
except their European system is based on the 32 time slot, which consists of 30 voice channel E1 systems. Interconnecting T carriers with E carriers is not generally a problem because most multiplexers and the multiplexers are designed to perform the necessary bit rate conversions. TDM applications. Of course, it is used for T1 multiplexing. It is also used for integrated services digital network or ISDN multiplexing. And lastly, for synchronous optical network or SONET. SONET is the American National Standards Institute for Synchronous Data Transmission on Optical Media. The international equivalent of SONET is Synchronous Digital Hierarchy or SDH. This ensure standards exist so that digital networks can interconnect internationally and that existing conventional transmission systems can take advantage of optical media through tributary attachments. Sonnet provides standards for a number of line rates up to a maximum line rate of 9.953 gigabits per second. Actual line rates approaching 20 gigabits per second are possible. Sonnet is considered to be the foundation for the physical layer of the broadband ISDN or BISDN. A synchronous transfer mode runs as a layer on top of Sonnet as well as on top of other technologies. Sonnet defines a base rate of 51.84 megabits per second and a set of multiples of the base rate known as optical carrier levels or OCX. Statistical TDM. A statistical multiplexer transmits only the data from active workstations. If a workstation is not active, no space is wasted on the multiplex stream. A statistical multiplexer accepts the incoming data streams and creates a frame containing only the data to be transmitted. This is an image of statistical TDM. As you can see, this solves the issue of efficiency for synchronous TDM. In statistical TDM or asynchronous TDM, as you can see, if two users are idle, they will not be given a specified time slot. The only time slots will be given are for users who are active and sending data to the multiplexer. A statistical multiplexer does not require a line over as high a speed line as synchronous time division multiplexing since STDM does not assume all sources will transmit all of the time. This is good for low bandwidth lines that are used for LANs. It is a much more efficient use of bandwidth. And that's it.